Hello and welcome to the Fireside Chat. I am Kalpana Singhal, Editor-in-Chief CXO TV. And today we have Ashok Cherian, CIO Page Industries, as our guest today. Ashok is a digital business transformation enthusiast who has helped companies transform by adopting disruptive digital innovation. With an overall IT leadership experience 26 years, out of which being CIO for over 12 years, he comes with proven expertise in driving digital strategy, IT operations, infrastructure, security, and IT applications. Diversity has always been cherished by Ashok, covering a wide spectrum of industry segments, including FMCG, consumer goods, building materials, manufacturing, trading, and retail domains with cross-cultural engagements across geographies like India, USA, UAE, UK, China, Australia, and Hong Kong. He has been associated with industry leading companies such as Tata Tea, Whirlpool, JK Cement, Imami, and currently with Page Industries Limited as CIO and Head of Business Excellence. An avid thinker and collaborator, Ashok's focus has been on business oriented digital excellence, crossing technology fences to help establish digital business models. Welcome, Ashok. We appreciate you for taking out time and joining us today. Um, all right, so my first question is, what is your broad digital vision of Page Industries where technology drives more of business? Okay, you know, when we talk about Page Industries, you know, it is indeed a multifaceted organization, you know. We have a, a capacity of production, which is over 260 million pieces a year, you know. And uh, we have a reach of around 70,000 multi brand outlets across the length and breadth of the country. We have around 750 retail exclusive shops selling our own products only. And uh, we have uh, around 18,000 workforce, you know, so plus workforce. So it is actually, there are real multifaceted flavors of it. It's got FMCG in it, it's got retail in it, it's got fashion in it, all built into one. So it's a very unique opportunity and obviously uh, i don't know how many people knows jockey is the single largest apparel brand in the country so so that's the type of uh, position uh, the company enjoys and uh, that's where uh, it comes from so it means that in a lot of opportunities so as far as digitization is concerned and uh, fortunately you know uh, you know we have a very ambitious digital strategy vision and commitment and to really make it happen and it's not just about in paper we believe in it and we are really uh, on on the road to it if you ask me my personal mission uh, yes uh, you know i really would love to make technology a force multiplier you know it's going to enable the growth aspiration of page so you know uh, and uh, you know it's very exciting to note that you know we have a great leadership at page who are really truly committed to this digital cause and you know we already formulated a forward-looking digital strategy and we are already in you know it's now execution time so we have sort of gone over the strategy we have, have really a lot of deliberation discussions alignment uh, you know uh, sharing understanding benchmarking all that has been done and now it's sort of execution time so that's uh, in execution always interesting so you know the other one is more of paper you know so it's it's difficult so now now it's the exciting time and I think, you know, through digital transformation, you know, Page is also to have differentiated capabilities, you know, uh, to sort of, uh, uh, you know, transform, you know, end-to-end -end business processes, technology, with the people aspect in every inch of it. So in short, you know, we are trying to actually build a completely new house, uh, you know, to, to meet our business aspirations. So that's, that's pretty exciting and uh, pretty encompassing. Uh, all right. So, as a digital transformation practitioner, how should digital innovations be driven across functions or departments in an organization? You know, this digital tra transformation is actually a very, very hyped and misunderstood term. I think you know. I think you know. I will take some time to sort of try to distill in my own way uh, that uh, you know what is this DX all about? You know. So, and also DX. At the same uh, manner and uh, the form, it doesn't fit all. You know? What is uh, DX to uh, page won't be DX to, let's say, uh, someone else. So it, it, it can be industry uh, differentiation. It can be, you know, 
cultural uh, angle can be uh, socio economic angle can be geographies it can actually make uh, you know their own flavors and uh, it is actually not one size fit all so and there is a lot of uh, perception about you know digital transformation is about digitization actually digitization according to me is not digital transformation so it is all two different things but digitization can complement digital transformation i think you know that's i mean my i think i would like to take a minute to explain you know what is digitization so it's all about you know mostly about cost optimization process excellence to standardization and things like that you know so so it's more of an operational necessity you know which is going to enable scale efficiency all that actually going to complement the digital transformation so but when you come to digital transformation it's actually much more customer centric you know customer value proposition centric so this technology is is, is going to sort of enable the opportunity the information flow is going to enable you know making strong digital assets for the customer and create new customer value and it's a wholesome experience and it's not in pockets so you know it's a, people talk about okay we have uh, we are like done this project so we have done a digital transformation i not very sure so so it's 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 about understanding because so much of hype around it and so much of talk around it you know and uh, when you talk about digital innovation you know without digital transformation uh, it 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 can be there it not necessary that digital transformation has to be there for digital innovation but then you know it comes naturally after the digital transformation so that's that's the point so you know digital transformation is going to deliver you know companies overall digital value proposition you know that's the uh, point you know you are not talking about you know uh, managing the scale and all that you are talking about you know up, upping your revenues you know really impacting your margins you know working on customer loyalty and obviously you know trying to attract top talent if you have an environment which is very you know uh, digitally savvy and connected and you know every thread is sort of uh, talking to you talking to the other one you know it makes a lot of uh, opportunity for even even attract people to come on board and you know be a part of the journey so it's all very important and intertwined you know so if you look at again you know some clarity on you know what are the pillars you know according to me there are around four pillars for digital transformation so one is the strategy and the road map the next very 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 important one is business ownership and participation so it it is a must you know there is no choice in it it's not an it agenda it's not an it department uh, or, a, or or something like that or someone in in the csu it is one really wanting to try something different no it has to be owned and it has to be participated by everyone in the business so what does that mean you know that means a lot of communication a lot of engagement a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, interconnects have to be sort of made ready and obviously you know we need to have an it team who is actually ready to do it i mean who has got skills uh, you know uh, who is ready to do it so having understood you know what is this digital transformation so i think it is now we can look at what is uh, digital innovation uh, innovation is a very tough term you know you know people especially in india you know are really afraid of failures do we really uh, celebrate failures if it's for a great cause i think we should but then culturally you know we are not really uh, greatly oriented towards it so if you really get a digital innovation then you got to encourage people to come out and actually really collaborate and you know take things to the next level and it's not about technology or you know cutting edge or you know whatever you may want to call it you know it's it, technology is according to me is mostly a, a commodity today so you know, it's pretty much available to everyone and anyone no matter how much sophisticated technology is it's up for sale you can buy it but then if you can't implement it if you can't use it to leverage for innovation if you really can't find out the use cases for innovation leveraging it it's not going to be happening so that's extremely important you know if you need to really do it and then fail fast is according to me one great uh, you know method of doing it because you know something uh, you know doesn't work out that's fine let's move on so but you need to figure out whether it's going to work uh, in 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 a short span you know it shouldn't be taking too long and you know drain people energy money and all that and then you know it becomes difficult so 
these frameworks have to be there if you need to really innovate uh, digitally and even otherwise actually and you know leading companies have innovation kpis you know you know we should actually in india you know i think you know it's 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 miles to go but we we can go there so you know so when you really look at digital transformation can be digital program transformation digital innovation can be part of it so 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 the, the, those are the main things which i am i am i'm looking at you know when i look at uh, digital transformation and uh, it's it's also about you know changing uh, the customer preferences you know ensuring uh, better customer experience and value so ultimate success you know is when you really create products and services which is powered digitally and you really make a, a dent with the company in through that digital innovation or intervention whatever you want to call it so 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 if you summarize you know we need to know what we are really getting into the organization need to be rallying around it there has to be culture which is supporting it uh, you know there has to be focus uh, around uh, you know doing it uh, you know you can have uh, kpis to do it you need to measure uh, you know success and you you can fail fast and you shouldn't be afraid of failures so all this if it really comes through then you can really innovate digitally you know it's 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 and and then now you know when this pandemic and all coming in you know it's more and more uh, proven that if you really don't innovate digitally it's going to be difficult so it's it's like now i'm probably earlier you know we had an option not to do it but now it's sort of innovative yeah absolutely though the pandemic has its own ill effects but uh, at the same time it has put uh, the digital transformation on the fast track yeah uh, so what are the key challenges for digital transformation and what would your advice be to counter these challenges hmm that's actually a very deep question i would say because uh, you know uh, you know it's a digital transformation is a very jazzy stylish term you know like everybody is talking about it but as i told earlier like like we pondered over you know what is all what is it all about you know so hardly i mean very few people really has really gone depth in i mean into understanding you know everything looks i mean if you look at the iceberg model you know you can actually see a great things on the top and what what is in the bottom is actually more important and you know studies have really figured out that you know even the best of the companies you know the executive level people also not more than 60% really understand the challenges you know that is the actual challenge you know not understanding the challenges is the challenge because they are not visibly on the top so that is the whole game you know if you really understand what is in the bottom then you will definitely do something about it because you know you don't nobody wants a failure right so so but then understanding that is the whole issue so you know what you really see on the top is all great terms and jargons you know big data analytics cloud omni channel smart sensor you know technology enabled products and all that is looking great but then to make it happen it it is an orchestra so it is not that you know it's going to happen on its own and uh, there are multiple barriers you know, there are uh, different definitely there are multiple barriers uh, some of them we can just ponder over you know because it's a very wide topic and we can actually go on and on so we some of them we will just uh, browse through uh, is about the enterprise barriers you know how fast is your organization what's your organization's clock speed is it really uh, in, in in line with uh, you know fostering a digital transformation That's something you need to do while well, you check and be ready if something is not in line and if it's very slow very very you know uh, uh, traditional and very slow then it may not work so you may have to actually fix it before you start so you know starting and then failing and if you really look at see everybody wants to talk about the success and how very difficult you know it's very difficult to find out how many have failed but then i personally feel that a lot of digital transformation journeys have actually failed to meet what they really wanted to do they may have got some success i'm not saying that it was a total failure but then you know what they really wanted and what they envisioned when they really wanted to do it and what they ended up getting is very different so so you know we look at the clock speed you know look at the risk and the compliance you know how much of risk is there you know how do you actually manage the risk 
you know it shouldn't happen that you know you you set up something and then figure out you know oh no 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 we can't implement this you know because of this uh, you know this is a risky thing or whatever so you know we need to be looking at it prior to getting into it so you know to really prepare that's what i'm again saying you know the understanding the hidden ones the challenges and you know really uh, you know getting over it is, is is going to be key to success of digital transformation and then obviously there are also to be frank you know to, there are uh, you know gaps in business skills competencies and you know even mindsets you know some somewhere you know mindsets also have to change and you know again here i mean mindset i think a lot of changes happened now uh, thanks to covid which uh, may not be the best way of doing it but then i think you know people are slowly realizing that you know there is no other hope so maybe that helped in other in, on a positive note maybe you know, on a negative has becoming positive so uh, yeah but then you know i don't want to be uh, talking only about the organization level and you know the business and the readiness and understanding and all that i think there are gaps honestly there are gaps in the it business interface also so you know i mean there are lack of objective clarity you know indecisive indecisive in you know in taking decisions you know outdated it collaboration models you know you know it collaboration has really changed and you know really gone uh, much beyond you know what i mean it's 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 very different you know unless you establish a very transparent very collaborative model which is going to be participative collaborative and transparent you know these are very very important to really make people come on board you know if you you know there are a lot of people you know who sit on the fence okay if it's success i mean it's not then i'm not in because they are not sure whether it will be success so but then the point is if they are not in it will now become a success because you know it on its own cannot do anything uh, by 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 just doing some you know a software implementation it's not a software implementation it's actually a business change the way of uh, working is going to get changed so if you don't have a collective buy in and uh, ownership and the proper communication and transparent manner of uh, doing things and the co owned prioritization you know this is just not going to happen so so at the every stage you know when you conceive it when you uh, plan it when you start it when you uh, go around the execution path the communication has to be very detailed very very engaging uh you know uh, people have to feel like you know they have to uh, be a part of it and the people in the organization must feel owning it participating and coming up with their own ideas you know otherwise you know what will end up happening is some implementation for the sake of implementation you know it's like no good so and there is also an aspect actually i feel is about the you know challenges in the corporate it you know you know there is a lot of legacy complexity people are you know hooked on with legacy they really don't want to move on from there they are very passionate about the old systems so you know they really uh, i mean they themselves actually even even if you know leader leadership level there could be alignment but you know but at the end of the day leader cannot do everything on his own so it has to be sort of owned understood appreciated so there also again you know there's a lot of uh, i think uh, opportunity of uh, upskilling uh you know right understanding and again communication sharing you know brainstorming you know all that uh, is is needed there and then another challenge is i think security concerns and a lot of people feel that okay if i digitize and i go for digital transformation there is actually uh, a fear of you know something will leak out something will go away how do we actually securely keep all this stuff this is actually another big roadblock you know so uh, and then this again has to be Uh, you know actually taken head on you know otherwise if you uh, if you really keep it off then it will come up at the wrong time and it will hit hit you hit you badly that you don't know at that time you know how to react so it's better to appreciate understand accept that there are challenges and you know they we need to actually uh, go in addressing it in a very transparent and um, uh, you know very collaborative manner so that you know everybody understands you know there's no point in you know throwing some jargon at people and you know making them confused but i think i strongly feel that you know unless people are on board from the mind it's not going to work it's not going to be uh, something which is sustainable so unless you get sustained uh, in a usage and sustained adoption 
you know uh, things won't work you know as you as you all know you know you all we all talk about every day almost every day we talk about machine learning it's all about learning from you know what uh, is actually happening and if it doesn't happen in a manner you know nothing can learn so it's 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 actually applicable to human beings and organizations also organizations also should you know appreciate that you know the machine learning is actually inbuilt into everything and everyone even all of us so so that has to be sort of understood and uh, accepted and you know maybe it may not be huge but then definitely there are honestly there are challenges in skills and competencies even in the it folks so there are uh, you know because again a lot of traditional mindset a lot of traditional uh, you know understanding you know, that also need to get cleared you know because they are definitely a key partner and without uh, everyone on board as i told earlier without everyone on board no digital transformation is going to sustain you know somewhere some problem will happen and you know there will be cross messaging there will be confusion there will be only chaos so there has to be a common you know if you summarize there has to be common thread which is accepted by it which is accepted by leaders which is accepted by operational people accepted by business folks at all levels and then you know they have to really rally behind it and then only it will happen so so, so you know, lack of exposure door communication you know lack of transparency these are the killers so you know i think as i as we started you know like you know it's all about understanding and appreciating there are challenges and it's not going to be cake walk it is going to be a difficult task but do a lot of people have done it lot of success stories and i think it's it's also important to share those stories to educate people and make them feel comfortable that hey you're not getting into something we are you know like like climbing mount everest or something like that it's doable but and we will do it you know there's a lot of uh, positivity which is required a lot of appreciation understanding and transparency i think these are the things you know if you if you really uh, i think if you really focus more on the bottom of the uh, you know the iceberg then then you will really see the bottom becoming the top and you know everything is visible and you know everything is sort of transparent and you know the Absolutely. whole organization is moving around yeah, yeah yeah i think this is what i think you know my my two sense so what sort of new age technologies have you embedded for sourcing distribution and the delivery in your long experience across multiple domains of uh, fmcg fmcd manufacturing and retail yeah yeah you know one thing if you really look at uh, uh, you know my outlook i have always been passionate about trying to do things ahead of the curve you know i think you know again it comes from my deep desire to sort of uh, get business difference through it so that has been my driving force as to why i have actually i would say i have it's making me tick because i strongly feel that you know if you are just doing what everybody else doing then you know you're not differentiating and if you're not differentiating you know it is just another uh, you're just another guy there you're not a leader or you're not a guy who's going to make the roads you know if you're not able to walk the roads you know to create the road and walk yourself you know that's that's the spirit which i always believe in and i've tried my own way somewhere it has been successful somewhere not been great successful all that is there it's a mixed bag okay so so i am not claiming that in everywhere i whatever i touched it become gold no so 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 you know looking at the times you know some of this uh, uh, a couple of them i would like to sort of discuss today is uh, maybe you know some are very old but very relevant you know it's it's not about the cutting so cutting edge at that time is definitely not cutting edge today and cutting edge which today is not going to be cutting edge tomorrow so so it's it's pretty relative on which which year or which time you're talking about i think it's more about you know your ability to drive innovation and differentiation through cutting edge technologies so you know it's all about your ability to find a use case you know i think you know a lot of people have actually you know a lot of vendors come to me discuss you know this technology is there that technology is there you know but then when i ask them okay can you tell me what is the use case can you suggest some use cases most of them are actually failing technology is great but then if you don't have a use case the application is i mean it, it's you know it's no good nobody is going to no no organization is going to you know spend money and you know do all this stuff if they're not getting any any benefits okay so it's it's as simple as that so when i some of them i will discuss about you know cutting edge that those times and i have 
the, one of the old examples is like you know <coughs> in early in 2000s you know it's like what very very old story but you know at that time you know we sort of introduced uh, you know sort of analytics analytics was not really there at that time so it was a very good form of analytics you know enabling analytics and mobility you know having uh, giving uh, laptops to people who go to auctions you know at at that time you know our buyers who used to go to auctions uh, you know they had uh, laptops with them knowing everything about everything is getting auctioned no one else knew that because of the great advantage of information heads up they had at their fingertips right there in the auction floor they could actually pick up uh, you know uh, stuff which we really wanted and really you know put a very very scientific bidding you know so that you know the the real cost really came down and the buying efficiencies really went up so you know this is one very interesting one which we did in the early 2000s so so you know at that point in time laptop itself was actually very you know very museum type of uh, thing you know only the cxos had it you know at that time we said no no that's fine but you know we need to be empowering and really using this uh, type of uh, you know capabilities to really make uh, different thing so at that time it was like it was like a big news you know it was like really cutting it but now you know laptop like even the kids have it so no big deal but then it's all about being ahead of time at that time so so <clears throat> so you know look at some of the other ones obviously is uh, a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, uh, optimization and uh, streamlining and you know cost cutting and all that which we have achieved through uh, you know some of the rpa projects uh, in my in my tenures uh, you know again that was at that time when rpa was a little unknown is a little uh, unheard of but then now a lot of rpa stuff is going on and you know we had a lot of challenge you know and, and i'll tell you any time <clears throat> every time you try to adopt something which has not really gone up the curve of stability it's actually a challenge but then you only then you will get that differentiated opportunities so otherwise you are just a follower you know so that's something which i don't really uh, <clears throat> subscribe to and you look at other models like artificial intelligence yes leveraged it big time in one of my uh, in a uh, companies one where i was associated with you know because that is actually a huge opportunity we figured out to optimize the buying uh, you know the, it is actually a lot of trade oriented thing and it is like going into 95% of the company's cost was from coming from there you know it is like that is a big deal so you know to really predict through artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict in you know, a whatever uh, moments you can expect in the market and accordingly <clears throat> you know time the buying and then uh, uh, you know the stocking and the uh, uh, in the, uh, the stock movements and supply chain and everything gets aligned to that was well, actually a big deal you know the the not just the <clears throat> not just the buying cost came down the, it also had a major impact on uh, the cost reduction in various things because of uh, leaner inventory uh, you know the supply chain efficiencies and so on and so forth and analytics has also been uh, 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 close to my heart uh, i've been uh, trying to uh, do it almost everywhere wherever i have been and uh, has really given great benefits and uh, even even now uh, you know we are actually into uh, a big analytics story uh, so big time we are trying to make uh, <clears throat> a lot of insights and uh, actionable insights and you know getting getting that uh, <clears throat> knowledge level up and uh, you know take better decisions and uh, better timed decisions so and some of the other ones are like you know let's say about uh, supply chain and logistics you know we again uh, uh, it's a little around 5 uh, years old story but at that time you know rfid was not a really big thing you know rfid we ventured into and uh, it was a total transformation you know like you know transforming the entire logistic all the logistics model the operation efficiencies it had a bit of iot also at that time and uh, you know so again the whole <coughs> price realization went up the customer satisfaction uh, was optimized uh, or improved 
and there are so many uh, huge benefits of completely overhauling the uh, the game there which is actually heavily logistics you know intensive and another one which i really want to do it's very close to my heart is you know is again very very old is uh, uh, is around <clears throat> early 2000s you know at that time i don't think anyone had heard a cloud and saas and early 2000s we we tried out a salesforce uh, tool which we actually adopted a saas uh, model in a, in a cloud uh, you know infrastructure type of uh, solution which was like you know at that time you know there was no mobile uh, solutions or all that but at that time you know we we really made it you know and i really looked back you know i i'm also surprised you know how we could really conceive that and uh, get that there you know another <clears throat> another one is i think is about the supply chain a lot of uh, ai ml adoption in supply chain to make it clean and uh, more uh, inclusive so so that obviously you know results are uh, I, mean, i don't have to explain the benefits so it's obvious benefits so i think it's all about you know keeping uh, your ears on the ground you know so having an, an understanding what's going on and you know picking up the right ones and your ability to connect with the use case and this is going to be uh, the key point which i would like to leave this uh, you know this point with this you know technology and cutting edge technology is no good if you are not able to relate to what is the use case and if you are not able to connect with the business and the business challenges you know it's just another technology so nobody is going to adopt or you know invest just for the sake of uh, because it is cutting edge so it's all about your ability and again getting into those areas when nobody has done it and that's where you really differentiate organizations you know when everybody has done these things getting into it is no big deal because there are so many use cases and you are really not able to differentiate because okay if every, everybody else is capability i'm just trying to catch up so i think this is are the <clears throat> bottom uh, line thoughts on uh, you know the cutting edge technology and adoption of that so so would you like to highlight a few names of the partners you are working with when it comes to deploying these technologies the solution providers that you are working with see you know again some of them are very well known names like you know microsoft and all that you know we are looking for uh, for uh, analytics and things like that now we have also looked at very niche small time people also see it's it's about i think it is all about understanding the value and understanding the partnering uh, opportunity i mean partnering mindset of the of the partner you know it's it's about you know they feeling a part of uh, your success and you know they really you know trying to walk that extra mile so th- those are the type of uh, people who i would love to associate with with uh, because it's, it should not be you know it, according to me selling is just the beginning so the relationship starts after selling so if you are able to own it and own that success not the you know money realization of sale you know if you if you are if you are not able to get to that type of a thinking the partners you know uh, you know they have to actually think about in this lines that you know sometimes you may make money sometimes you may lose money but then credibility and <clears throat> make success out of it is is what i value and those type of solution is what i cherish for and you know so so there are different type of people you know so i have even worked with some startups so i mean everybody has got different appetites and different thought process and you know uh, end of the day if uh, uh, when it comes to software as a service you you have lot many options these days so uh, like do you have any criteria like picking up the partners yeah so you know obviously uh, great, uh, i mean whatever i said was a sort of criteria only because you know it's it's like it's like <laughs> they becoming uh, you know obviously when you look at the technical criteria there can be so many like security you know the contracting and you know costs and all that is anyway there you know it's pretty given see that's again the top of the iceberg i would call it you know, because that's everybody talking about everybody knows but what is not understood is what actually what people should discover and try to discover is the the where this you know the the vendor or the supplier or who it is is coming from you know is he really wanting to make a quick uh, sell and make some money and not really wanting to make you a success 
and make this project a success and not able to walk that extra mile if needed <clears throat> not necessary that it has to be done that way and <clears throat> and coming with the 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 requisite business understanding and business knowledge and the depth of knowledge you know these guys actually the, the point is about you know we are working with the vendor because we are obsessed with our our way our industry and the way of we working but these guys work with so many other people so you know, some of the best practices which, which is in some some other uh, you know industry can be very well bought by them but then you know it's all about that mindset you know i think I, that's something which is very hidden very different difficult to figure out but then if you figure out then you have a great partnership going forward sure. so how do you envision manufacturing industries handling workforce during lockdown yeah lockdown is uh, is the essence of uh, uh, nowadays you know so yes. you know <clears throat> So it's unplanned, you know. So this lockdown was obviously unplanned, and everybody has uh, got impacted. And uh, no, I don't think anyone can say, no, no, we are, we are fine. You know, I don't think anyone, if they're trying to say that, you know, it's something wrong. You know, they're just trying to hide something, honestly. So it's about, I think, you know, I think the way I am looking at manufacturing industry. Okay. So I think I would broadly classify this lockdown-related uh, area into two. One thing is, what can you do now? And maybe the post-pandemic, what can you do for the manufacturing industry or to sort of uh, get over uh, such things if it happens again? You know, we never know. They are saying that, you know, that even if we have vaccine, there could be another strain and there could be a re reoccurrence. So I don't know when this is going to end. So it's actually very difficult to predict. I wish we had some, you know, uh, predictive analytics to get there. But then let's see. So, so anyway, so it, coming about now, uh, the technology friend, I think you know, I think it's it's quite plain, plain and simple. I think the first one is pretty straightforward. I think you should try. Organization should try to do remote. Whatever can be done remotely. You know, we shouldn't actually over engineer and you know say you know the guy has to be here and you know all that. You know, I, I think people have crossed over it, but then there could be some road thinking roadblocks or mindsets which has to change. So they have to if they can be done remotely. Please do it remotely. But manufacturing, I understand there are limitations to do it remotely. But then there can be interventions, I believe. You know, more of uh, monitoring uh, and, uh, you know, uh, censoring and monitoring and you know, alerting and all can be done uh, by uh, digitization, and which can actually, you know, minimize the human presence. So that actually is an opportunity I feel that we can be uh, looked at. And obviously, it leads to another point, which is like strengthening the IoT. Uh, framework uh, can it be made a little more broader and deeper i know i know it, there are got limitations but then you know, because most of these projects are you know then you go to go to a pilot and then you know go to deployment and it takes time so by the time the pandemic make it over so so it's so whatever it is you know you got to make those uh, short and uh, fast ones and obviously the rest of it is all like everybody knows you know the, having the sensors of uh, and the uv chambers and all that is you know, like Talk like it's become like you know you get a call from uh, somebody who does it almost every other day so so it's like commodity now so uh, and then yes obviously very important is about the process and practices i know to have a very uh, clear process of uh, covid protocol and communicating it is very essential and i think in the communication i think it can do a lot of job you know in terms of uh, vernacular communication and you know a lot of simplification and you know at their fingertips you know these are you know a lot of things happen because of a lack of awareness and uh, confusion and understanding which can actually be helped with time by by it and then obviously the other process and uh, policies which is uh, not really it but then you know having flexible work hours maybe you know you know reorganizing the manufacturing facilities and the training the workers of for the various hygiene aspects and all that and then we you know, quickly go to what is future future looks to be really going to be different for manufacturing industry i think you know we're going to have a lot of opportunities for ar vr robotics you know iot is definitely going to be a big game changer and 5g is going to really make it big i think the manufacturing process is going to be really turned around by 5g and smart manufacturing and iot uh, all that is going to really 
become the order of the day. It's not going to be an optional or something which the, only the Amazon of the world is going to do. It's going to be done by even the SMS in India for sure. You know, otherwise they all understand that they are vulnerable and the whole world is vulnerable. And you know, they have to adopt to all this stuff. And then obviously there will be a lot of uh, opportunities coming for the manufacturing to make it even touchless by drones and surveillance and you know management and all that which can actually bring it in. Yeah. So what has been the economic and business impact of COVID-19 in page industries functioning? Okay. Economic impact is actually you know nobody in 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 this world uh, in, uh, can say that I didn't have any economic. Impact. Yes, we did have an economic impact in uh, April and March. Uh, March ending and uh, April obviously was like a washout. As we all know, it has been a lockdown period, uh, national lockdown. So, but the, the, there are uh, good points. Actually, you know, we have uh, sort of uh, picked up uh, pretty, I mean, month on month, it has been a journey which is up. And very fortunate uh, that to understand that, you know, in the August, we actually crossed the last year's numbers. So, you know, look at e-commerce, it is surging, it is more than 200% up. So, which is actually a great sign. So, and and obviously another another interesting point as far as page industry is concerned, you know, we have a very complementing uh, product range, you know. Our, um, most of our products are perfect for work from home. And uh, I think we operate out of an essential part of the apparel industry itself. So, you know, it's something very difficult to sort of, uh, you know, not to get into it's not a, something which is like you know okay optional it's more sort of more mandatory stuff so that way you know we are pretty uh, safe uh, much better place to many of our other uh, industry uh, people around uh, okay and uh, you know if you look at uh, page is a very very strong uh, financially very strong company and uh, uh, you know it's very heartening to note that you know we just didn't uh, do any additional borrowing at all to manage our working capital or anything in this uh, COVID times. And we are now back to action. Actually, all our manufacturing plants are uh, perfectly functioning. We are almost back to normal. And as I told you, you know, in August, we have actually surpassed even last year. So I think, you know, it's all about also people learning to live with COVID. So it's actually helping. So yeah, that's what it is. That's great. Nothing's are uh, getting normal. Good to hear that. Uh, all right. So, how are digital technologies going to help you tide over the crisis without significant uh, business disruption? Okay. The, uh, actually, I mean, if you look at uh, non-manufacturing, you know, uh, then it has been absolute smooth. So it is a. I mean, I would say very smooth of the smooth, smoothest of the smooth transition from a you know office based model to a work from home model we were never a, a work from home uh, type of company you know we are pretty much uh, uh, office oriented uh, company but now 100% work from home so you know actually we have not uh, asked our folks to come to office at all uh, from almost end of march so all the non manufacturing people are totally 100% working out of uh, their own homes and uh, I think you know some of the other I mean uh, core strengths we had uh, is actually helped us to turn around fast. I think you know we don't have any own uh, data centers or you know critical pieces which is there in our premise. It's either in a cloud or uh, in uh, you know in a, in a, in a managed co-located uh, uh, places. So it's not just about the communication collaboration tools. You know we have ensured availability of enterprise application to everyone who needs it so so there is absolutely no problem at all and uh, so there was some catching up required initially to make the paperless loop complete so in in fact if you really ask me i have not signed one paper for past six months so but it's not functioning i think it's a similar say, case with everyone in our company so you know we have actually helped uh, you know uh, closing these loops pretty fast and you know thanks to my team and the leadership support we actually could turn it around and uh, you know quickly uh, get over this and to very seamlessly shift to uh, you know this mode. I think it's all about you know success is not just about having problems. You know it's about having a mindset and a focus to solving these problems. And I think we we as a as a company we have it and I think you know that has helped. 
Yeah. So with this, uh, how do you see the IT agenda changing over 2021 and post-pandemic? Yeah, very interesting, a very deep, very long uh, answer can be, but then we'll try to make it short. So 2021, I think, you know, it's going to be all around being lean, being smart, and ensuring distance continuity. I think that, that this is a broad, broad three themes which is coming to my mind. You know, obviously, you know, obvious of the obvious is, you know, the collaboration, communication, adoption, which is like gone through the roof. The people who have never ever uh, done a video conferencing is, is doing it every day today. So, you know, it's like organization of like, it's like caught on like wildfire. Even, even kids, you know, having the online uh, classes, you know, it's like become the order of the day. And, you know, I mean, social acceptability is also pretty high because uh, the entire uh, framework of the lives have actually gone into it. So nobody's having any problem at all. So it's going to be definitely a focus area. And uh, totally a new thing which has actually come up is uh, maybe security concerns because of all this interconnection and everybody working from their own places and all that. It has actually opened up a bit of uh, uh, challenges and there will be IT agenda driving a lot of security uh, you know uh, tightening i would say and in 2021 i think you know most of the major projects which are supposed to get started may get delayed so this is going to be uh, the the challenge because you know obviously because of the uh, cash flows and uh, you know the the various uh, financial aspects of it it may you know it may not really really work out but the good part is about the work in progress projects is something which is really interesting because I have also seen we had some big time projects. Uh, the work in progress projects have really progressed very, very fast because simply because of the availability and flexibility of the people who are actually collaborating. Because you know, earlier we had uh, so many people traveling here and even to get up to set up a meeting itself, it took eight weeks. Now we are sitting at meeting in hours. Okay, everybody is coming on board and it's all done. So, you know, you take decisions and, you know, all the all the testing and everything is so simple and seamless. And everything anyways in the cloud and you know, wherever it is, so there's no problem at all. So, every, availability uh, is sort of ensured. So, uh, the rest of it is just doing it and doing it is all remote anyway. So, travel time is gone. I know people are not uh, you know, unavailable. You know, those were the real blocks or, or I would say not blocks. Uh, the, it used to slow down the, pro, uh, the pace. Now, things are going at a super speed. So, you know, that's that's a good part of it. And I think 2021, e-commerce is getting a lot of more traction because of the obvious reasons of Tesla's and you know, all that is going to get definitely more traction. And obviously, a theme for 2021, I think another one, this is going to be strong. It's going to be shorter ROI. You know, can we get the money immediately? Can it actually take out some cost? These are the questions probably being asked everywhere and will be asked more because of the need of the R, which all of us know. And that, that's that, these are my thoughts about 2021 and post pandemic i think this is going to be the biggest opportunity for digital because now you really if you really ask me uh, the, the 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 realization that digital can do at the boardroom level has really really quadruplicated i mean it is like it is really exponentially increased because people are really understanding the merit of it the need of it not just as something which is nice to have but as a must to have that whole you know positioning change of nice to have to must have is actually very very interesting so if it, once that happens everything else happens you know so the acceptance level will go up then you know it and the digital agenda will get a more firmer seat in the strategy because if you, if, if you don't do it the strategy will is no good because you can't execute it so you are like vulnerable so and and obviously you know cutting edge technology again you know so and things like ai ml robotics drone iot ar vr all that is going to be actually not going to be hype or something which you see only in those fancy videos it's going to get experimented and it's going to get uh, really used because people have no other go so and then you know the the interesting thing is this pandemic has opened up a lot of uh, use cases by itself so the there's nothing stronger a use case other than business continuity you know so if it's business is going to get stopped then you know yeah you know what is the point in doing all these things so so obviously you know there could be some other very interesting developments i'm seeing you know like you know digitally enabled you know there could be digital 
drive in concept will going to be big time i think you know there will be drive in malls where you can actually uh, you know actually go and shop uh, without getting out of uh, of your vehicle so yeah, there will be very very nice uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, display systems and you know artificial mirrors and all that where you can actually see it figure it then the, your your uh, parcel is there you don't even touch it so if you i mean most of us i know you know i mean you know how it is and i have actually honestly not touched a rupee for past 6 months because i have been transacting 100% in uh, uh, you know through digitally so so if you can digitally shop going into a mall uh, which is a drive in mall with all the shops not just the food joints you know i've talked about even even the apparel stuff you know it can be done it's possible so all that you know i mean drive in cinema theaters and you know all that is going to actually going to be a new wave which is going to be Uh, digitally enabled otherwise it can't sustain okay so 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 that is actually a great opportunity for digital there and even retail is going to be really you know omni channel is not going to be a fancy uh, jargon anymore it's going to be mandatory so these are you know some of the things and e-tail also will actually really change in terms of making the sale happening without the touch and feel you know they are going to this is the best opportunity they have got you know if they have failed this it's going to be difficult to come back so anyway so i mean it's it's like all encompassing you know if it, digital is the future digital is the new oil i mean it, it, data is the new oil you know, and, and it's going to be uh, i think it's most exciting times for you know practitioners like uh, us uh, you know to partner it and make it happen so <clears throat> our last question uh, uh, ashok is that can you name a person who has had a tremendous impact on you as a leader Uh, why and how did this person impacted your life there are many people but then i would love to talk about someone who maybe you also know i mean most of the people in india will know definitely is uh, mr ratan tata see you know i mean he is a role model to me because of his simplicity and uh, humility i had the fortune of uh, interacting with him multiple times in multiple ways and uh, reasons Uh, i had a long association with tata group in uh, 13 years so i you know we have actually you know we deeply involved in one of their business excellence uh, programs which was very it was actually spent he only bought that whole thing and you know it was really driven the whole thing personally so who was actually getting into it and getting deeper into it was actually had a lot of opportunities to interact it's about being focused at the same time being uh, you know task oriented and result oriented it's actually a unique uh, situation you know a lot of people we have seen is either a task oriented guy becomes very very tough he is not a simple humble straight forward guy you know it's a very unique combination i found in uh, mr tata that you know he is such a gem of a personality really you know uh, really touched me because and you know another another interesting uh, observation is you know if you ask him a question he will answer you with full sincerity and you will he will answer to the question what you asked he will not tell something which he wanted to tell and a lot of people i have seen you know if especially at a very high level you know they will just talk what they want you want to listen you listen so but then he is not the one among that you know he is really really uh, very 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 simple very down to earth you know i mean these are great qualities i believe you know and uh, I, i don't know to what extent i have been able to emulate it it's a it's a billion dollar discussion but then but then yes uh, definitely if you really ask me who is it i really look up to him yeah, he he is the legend <laughs> i would say <laughs> so with this thank you everyone for joining us thank you ashok it was complete pleasure interacting with you appreciate your time for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel